the, the project which um, became consumed probably started, I suppose, in response to uh, reorientations, which we did with Shanghai Dramatic Arts Centre in 2009 to 10. Because um, that was the first time Tony Guilfoyle, who um, I've worked with a lot, um, and who also works extensively with uh, Robert Lepage, it was the first time he'd been to China and had worked with Song Ruhui, who's um, a terrific actress from uh, Shanghai, and they, they were very keen to work together again on a more intense piece. Uh, and I was excited by that. Um, the, the difficulty is that Hui speaks not a word of English and Tony speaks not a word of Chinese. Um, and I started to think about the possibilities of that dramatically and thought, well, if we brought in a third actor who, um, who was bilingual, um, then maybe we'd have the beginnings of an interesting eternal triangle. And that's how we got hold of Ning Li. And really, the, the piece has become about the three of them. Um, and we spent um, a three-week period in Shanghai early this year um, really just working around the possibilities of uh, what the play might become. So the play operates like uh, an eternal triangle. There's a, a triangular relationship between the three of them. And um, in the relationship that's existing in the now, um, John, Tony's character, is trying to move things forward. He's trying to... He's been very shocked, uh, surprised by the depth of his feeling for this woman he can't even talk to. If he wants to, to deepen that relationship, he can't do it through language, but he can do it using uh, the presence of uh, Tom Chung, who uh, becomes his interpreter for a conversation via Skype. Um, and that sort of distancing of having both the technology and the translator present is really interesting and sets off a lot of um, plot terms because it's possible when you've got that anonymity that's present in the internet for people to start pretending to be someone they're not and that's where the, uh, the plot starts to get more complex and more interesting. When Reorientations was performing one of the things which I noticed a lot was the way in which a lot of the young people in the audience would actually watch the show through a camera and I found that sort of distancing effect of placing the electronic medium between themselves and the experience of watching the play really extraordinary. And it's very resonant, I think, as to the way in which people are now communicating, uh, attempting to experience what is actually a live presence of another human being. It's almost as if they need the electronic filter in a way. And that was something we wanted to explore a lot during our workshop. A lot of the time, the characters are living in a kind of isolation. There's that constant distance between the self and the other live body. And it's really interesting to do that in theatre um, because it means that the characters can all be operating in, in different spaces and yet all still within the same space. So the, the liveness of the theatre form gives you a kind of uh, tension with uh, what the characters are actually doing and the way in which they're communicating in a way that isn't live. Um, there's a very beautiful scene where we've been able to put them into a bed together on a screen through the use of technology, but in fact they're isolated still from each other. Um, and it's incredibly telling and very moving to, to see that in performance. The workshop just started from really absolutely nothing and we had we had hunches we had ideas we had uh, thoughts as to where the piece might go we had a number of resources um, I brought in some short stories by the famous Chinese writer Du Shan and we examined those um, one or two aspects of the structure of one and the mood of another one went into the final play but they're, they're not based on them um, we we played a lot of games with language, we played a lot of games with uh, physically representing ideas. And we also did a workshop, public workshop for uh, a group of students and again got their feedback there. So a lot of it was working not only amongst ourselves but also in dialogue with our audiences. 
you know, from China anymore. I want completely Western. You know, I want to eat Western food. I want to read Western you know, philosophy. You know, stuff. The story that eventually emerged through the improvisations is to do with um, Hui's character, who we're calling Su Chan. Um, having had a relationship with uh, Lee's character, who we're calling uh, Tong Chan, um, back in the 80s when they were both students. Um, and um, we wanted to show some of that um, youthful um, relationship, just well, by way of contrast, but also by way of giving the backstory. Um, and we felt, given the style of the play, that they couldn't really go back and act themselves 20-something years ago. So what we did was we improvised scenes between them and then scripted that and passed it on to two young actors um, who we, we filmed doing those scenes. And so the, the past will be shown in a kind of filmic form, um, almost as if the characters are looking back over their lives and when they do, they see it in the form of a movie, which I think is something human beings often do. They create their own fictions. Although this is a, a show with only three actors in it, it's um, multilingual, it's multidisciplinary, it's multimedia, it's, um, it, it's a vast amount of material crammed into a very small space and, and really quite a short time frame. <laughs> Ring the bell. <laughs> Because I'm not. Um, if they want, if you want me to help you, you want them. Yeah. Well, I, you know, the prop, probably not necessary.